What's the eternal principle? Brahman. <laughs> Which is? Well, we call it God, but that personifies it, you see. That's it is the experience of the eternity. Yeah. The experience of the eternal. As right? what you are. Yes. I would say. That, that's that whatever eternity is, is here right now. Or nowhere else. Or everywhere else. If, if you don't experience it now, you're never going to get it. Because when you get to heaven, that's not eternal, that's just everlasting. Uh, he heaven lasts a long time. It's not eternal, it's everlasting. Well, I don't follow that now. The eternal is beyond time. The concept of time shuts out eternity. Time is our invention. Our experience, yeah. But the ultimate unqualified mystery is beyond human experience. It becomes inflected. As they say, there is a condescension on the part of the infinite to the mind of man, and that is what looks like God. So whatever it is we experience, we have to express in language that is just not up to the occasion. That's it. It's That's inadequate. what poetry is for. Poetry is a language that uh, has to be penetrated. It, it, it doesn't shut you off. It, it opens. It, it's the rhythm, the, the uh, precise choice of words that will have implications and suggestions that go past the word is uh, what has to happen. And then you get what Joyce calls the radiance, the epiphany. The epiphany is the showing through of the uh, essence, what the, Quine is called the quiditas, the whatness. The whatness is the Brahman. Why do you think it is there is in so many people this deep yearning to live forever, to secure my place in heaven? But when you realize what heaven is, uh, I mean, in, in the works of such a person as uh, Thomas Aquinas, it is the beholding of the beatific image of God, uh, which is a timeless moment. You know, time explodes. So, again, eternity is not something everlasting. And you can have it right here now in your relationships. Um, I've lost a lot of friends, and my parents and all. And uh, a realization that has come to me very, very keenly is that I haven't lost them that uh, that moment when I was with them had an everlasting quality about it that is now still with me. What it gave me is still with me. And uh, there's a kind of intimation of immortality in that. Do you see what I mean? Now, there's a wonderful work of Schopenhauer's. He says, when you reach a certain age, and he wrote this when he was say, in his 60s or so, and look back over your life, it seems to have had an order. It seems to have had a, a, been composed by someone. Mm. And those events that, when they occurred, seemed merely accidental and occasional and just something that happened, turn out to be the main elements in a in a consistent plot. So he says, who composed this plot? And he said, and just as your dreams are composed by an aspect of yourself of which your consciousness is unaware, so your whole life has been composed by the will within you. And then he says, just as those people whom you met by chance became effective agents in the structuring of your life, so you have been an agent in the structuring of other lives. And the whole thing gears together like one big symphony, he says, everything influencing and structuring everything else. And uh, he said, it's as though our lives were the dream of a single dreamer in which all the dream characters are dreaming too. And so everything links to everything else moved out of the will in nature. It's a beautiful idea. It's an idea that occurs in India in the, idea, in the image of what's called the net of Indra or the net of gems. It's a net of gems where every gem reflects all the other ones, 